वेलकम टू माई यूट्यूब चैनल नॉलेज एंटरटेनमेंट एंड वंस अगेन टूडे आई एम गोइंग बैक टू द टॉपिक ऑफ प्लस वन मैथमेटिक्स वेयर वी हैव लेफ्ट इन द प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव कवर्ड द टॉपिक्स ऑफ सेट थ्योरी फंक्शन एंड रिलेशन देन ट्रिंगोमेट्री एंड देन प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ मैथमेटिकल इंडक्शन सो द नेक्स्ट चैप्टर दैट मीन्स द फिफ्थ चैप्टर इज कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर सो वी आर गोइंग बैक टू द टॉपिक ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स numbers so first of all what is complex number the first question is what is complex number we know that square root of a positive number 1 is 1 square root of 2 is near about 1.4142 and so on square root of 3 is 1.73 something square root of 4 is 2 and so on but what about square root of a negative number that is a big problem if i ask you what is the square root of minus 2 it will be difficult for you to tell me what is the square root of minus 2 because if we multiply a positive number to itself the result is positive and if we multiply a negative number to itself the result is once again positive that means product of a number with itself whether the number is positive or negative the product of the number with itself is always positive it can never be negative so that means square root of minus 2 does not exist so what we do we assume that square root of minus 1 to be we denote it by a symbol iota we call it iota i o t a this is iota and it is it is imaginary number it does not exist because i have told you that product of a number with itself is always positive whether the number is positive or negative so if iota is positive then iota square is positive so it cannot be minus 1 if iota is negative the square is again positive it cannot be negative so that means square root of a negative number does not exist and we assume it to be denoted by iota so this iota is an imaginary number this is an imaginary number so if under root minus 1 we have assumed to be equal to iota squaring both sides we will get iota square to be equal to minus 1 so iota is an imaginary number whose square is supposed to be or you can say taken to be equal to minus 1 now we have a number suppose a number is 2 plus 3 iota that means one part is real one part is imaginary or you can say 2 minus 3 iota so any number which has two parts one is real and one is imaginary such number is called a complex number and usually denoted by z so what is z z is a plus iota b where a b are both real numbers so a and b are both real numbers and b is real number but iota b is not a real number because a real number multiplied by iota will become imaginary so this is imaginary plus real so such a number we denote it normally by z and we call it as a complex number so first thing is what a complex number is i think it is clear to you now that a complex number is a combination of a real number and a, an imaginary number so now we move on to the main topic so suppose there are first thing what i'm going to tell you that there is a law known as trichotomy law there is a law known as trichotomy law this law states that if a and b are real numbers then a is less than b or a is equal to b or a is greater than b so when you think of this law 
You will think that it is a wastage of mathematics. We know that if there are two real numbers, then either A will be less or B will be less or they will be equal. There is no fourth possibility. Yes, you are true that there is no fourth possibility, but trichotomy law is restricted to the set of real numbers only. That means if you go beyond real numbers, trichotomy law fails. Why this I am telling you here? Because if you say there are two complex numbers Z1 and Z2, they are both complex numbers and we denote the set of complex numbers by C. So if Z1 and Z2 are two complex numbers, then it is not necessary, it is not necessary that either Z1 is less than Z2 or Z1 is equal to Z2 or Z1 is greater than Z2. All these three conditions may fail. For example, if I take Z1 to be 2 plus 3 iota and Z2 to be 3 plus 2 iota, what will you say? Is 2 plus 3 iota less than 3 plus 2 iota? Or 2 plus 3 iota is equal to 3 plus 2 iota? Or 2 plus 3 iota is greater than 3 plus 2 iota? No, all these three statements are wrong. So, the law fails. This trichotomy law, which seems to be very usual, which seems to be very, very simple, is really very important when you enter into the fields of complex numbers. Trichotomy law fails. That means two complex numbers are usually non comparable. Maybe you can't say that Z1 is less than Z2, you can't say that one is equal to Z2, you can't say that one is, is greater than Z2. Yes, this condition may happen. These two conditions will never be there. These two conditions will never be there. Z1 less than Z2 and Z, uh, Z2, sorry, Z2 less than Z1. These two conditions will never be there. But this condition may be. And when this condition will be there, the two complex numbers will be called equal. So there is equality of complex numbers, which I am going to cover next. Equality of complex numbers. Equality of complex numbers. Two complex numbers, two complex numbers. Z1 and Z2 are said to be equal, equal means Z1 is equal to Z2, if and only if real part of Z1 is equal to real part of Z2 and imaginary part of Z1 is equal to imaginary part of Z2. Here, I must tell you that if Z is A plus iota B, then this A is real part of Z and this B is imaginary part of Z. Never confuse that imaginary Z is iota B. It is not iota B, it is only B. The coefficient of iota is the imaginary part of Z, not the complete iota B. So, two complex numbers Z1 and Z2 are equal if and only if real parts are equal and imaginary parts are separately equal. So, in such a case, the only second case that Z1 is equal to Z2 can be true. But, once again, I am going to remind you that Z1 less than Z2 or Z2 less than Z1 are never, never possible. Now, we will move on to the algebra of complex numbers. So, what is algebra of complex numbers? So, algebra of complex numbers can be considered in case of addition and can also be considered in case of multiplication. So, first I am talking about addition. First I am talking about addition. 
सो लेट z1 वन इज इक्वल टू ए प्लस आयोटा डी एंड जेड टू इज इक्वल टू सी प्लस आयोटा डी देन वॉट इज जेड वन प्लस जेड टू जेड वन प्लस जेड टू दैट मीन्स इफ यू वॉन्ट टू एड टू कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर देर रियल पार्ट विल बी एडेड टू गिव द रियल पार्ट ऑफ द साम ऑफ कॉम्प्लेक्स नंबर एंड देर इमेजनरी पार्ट विल बी एडेड टू गिव द इमेजनरी पार्ट ऑफ द सम ऑफ द टू नंबर दैट मीन्स दिस ए प्लस सी विल फॉर्म द रियल पार्ट ऑफ जेड वन प्लस जेड टू एंड दिस बी प्लस डी विल फॉर्म द imaginary part of the complex number z1 plus z2 so that is if you want to add to complex numbers what you are you will have to do add real parts separately to have the real part of the sum of two numbers and add imaginary parts to give the imaginary part of the sum of the two numbers so this is how to add to complex numbers and now there are some properties of addition what these properties are the first property is that the set of complex numbers is closed under addition the set of complex numbers the set of complex numbers is closed under addition what it means it means if Z1, Z2 are two complex numbers. Then their sum Z1 plus Z2 is also a complex number. So the addition is closed for complex numbers. Then the second property is addition is commutative. Addition. of complex numbers is commutative so i think you understand what is commutative property if z1 and z2 are two complex numbers then z1 plus z2 is same as z2 plus z1 that means the addition of complex numbers follow the rule of commutative commutativity so it is the second property of algebra of complex numbers for addition the third property is associative addition of complex numbers is associative so associative you also understand what an uh, associative property is if z1 z2 and z3 are three complex numbers then if you will add z1 and z2 first and then add z3 or if you add z2 and z3 first and then add z1 the result will be the same this is the associativity of addition of complex numbers third property is and existence of existence of additive additive identity existence of additive identity so there exists a complex number zero so zero belongs to the set of complex numbers why because this zero can be written as zero plus zero iota so that means this zero is a complex number whose real part is zero and its imaginary part is also zero so there exists a complex number zero in the set of complex numbers such that such that z plus zero is same as z is same as zero plus z for every z in the set of complex numbers so zero is the additive identity for the set of complex numbers the fourth property is existence of inverse existence of inverse i'm 
only writing here inverse and not writing here additive inverse because addition is already I have written in the topic. So this is existence of in fact additive inverse. For every complex number z, we have we have a complex number minus z in the set of complex numbers such that such that if you add minus z to z the result will be the additive identity and if you will add z to minus z the result is again additive identity 0 so here this minus z is called this minus z is called additive inverse additive inverse of z so this is the property existence of inverse then we move on to the next property and now the property will be for multiplication before going to the property of multiplication let us understand how multiplication take place for complex numbers suppose you are having two complex numbers z1 and z2 z1 is a plus iota b and z2 is c plus iota d then what is z1 into z2 so z1 is your a plus iota b and z2 is c plus iota d so open the bracket in usual way usual way means multiply first a and c you will get ac multiply a by iota d you will get iota ad multiply iota b with c you will get iota bc and multiply finally iota b with iota d you will get iota square bd but you know what is the value of iota square the value of iota square is minus 1 we have seen in the starting of this lecture that iota square is minus 1 so this plus iota square bd will be changed into minus bd now there are two terms where there is no iota and there are two terms with iota so we will collect these terms separately so first i am going to write the terms having no iota so these are ac minus bd and now we are having two terms having iota taking iota common from these two we will get ad plus bc so now name it as suppose m plus iota name it as n so this is your m and this is your n so what you will get m plus iota into n that means the product of two complex numbers is again a complex number which means the set of complex numbers is closed under multiplication also that means if you multiply two complex numbers the result will also be a complex numbers and that is the closure property for the set of complex numbers so here is the multiplication how it goes and now the properties of multiplication the first property of multiplication is same that was in case of addition that means multiplication is commutative multiplication is commutative that means z1 into z2 is the same as z2 into z1 for every two complex numbers z1 and z2 this is the first property of multiplication for complex numbers the second property is also the same that is multiplication is associative multiplication is associative that means for every three complex numbers z1 z2 and z3 we have what we have if you multiply z1 and z2 first and then multiply z3 or if you multiply z2 and z3 first and then multiply z1 the result you will obtain will be the same so this property you know is known as associative property so that means the multiplication property for association is okay for complex numbers 
So if you are having three complex numbers Z1, Z2, Z3, then Z1 into Z2 multiplied by Z3 is same as Z1 multiplied by the product of Z2 and Z3. So this is the property associative for multiplication. Next is the property once again that is existence of existence of identity. And I am not writing once again multiplicative identity because multiplication is clear here that we are going through the properties of multiplication. So here we are talking about the existence of multiplicative identity. There exists a complex number 1 in the set of complex numbers. Now once again why this one is complex number? Because we can write this one as 1 plus iota into 0. So that means its real part is 1 and its imaginary part is 0. So this one is also a complex number. So there exists a complex number 1 such that such that any complex number z multiplied by 1 is same as z is same as 1 multiplied by z and it is true for every complex number z. So 1 acts as a multiplicative identity in case of the set of complex numbers. The next property is the existence of inverse and once again it is multiplicative inverse. Before moving into the topic of inverse, let us see what is the reciprocal of a complex number. Let z be the number a plus iota b then what is 1 upon z? It is 1 upon a plus iota b and if you multiply the numerator and denominator by a minus iota b what you are going to get in the numerator 1 into a minus iota b is a minus iota b and in the denominator it is x plus y into x minus y so it is going to be x square minus y square that means a square minus iota b whole square now iota b whole square you can write separately as iota square b square and once again what is the value of iota square it is minus 1 so it is going to be plus b square it is a minus iota b upon a square plus b square and you can write it as a upon a square plus b square minus iota into or you can say plus iota into minus b upon a square plus b square. So it is again reciprocal of a complex number. Here one thing I must mention that a and b are not both zero because if both are zero then one upon zero does not make any sense. So if z is a non-zero complex number I must say then its reciprocal is also a complex number whose real part is a upon a square plus b square and imaginary part is minus b upon a square plus b square. Now we will move on to the existence of inverse, multiplicative inverse. For every complex number z, once again I must mention non-zero. For every non-zero complex number z, there exists a complex number 1 upon z it is also a complex number, we have seen that if z is a non-zero complex number then 1 upon z is also a complex number such that such that z multiplied by 1 by z is the multiplicative identity and is same as 1 upon z multiplied by z. So the inverse of, multiplicative inverse of z is its reciprocal 1 upon z. So these are the properties of addition and multiplication separately. And there is one more property which involves addition as well as multiplication and you know which property it is. It is the property of distribution. That means distributive distributive property. And what distributive property says for any complex numbers z1, z2 and z3 we have we have what we have z1 multiplied by the sum of z2 and z3 is 
equal to the sum of product of z1 and z2 and product of z1 and z3. So it is nothing but simply like opening the bracket z1 into z2 plus z1 into z3. So this is the distributive property for the set of complex numbers. Now these were the properties of algebra of complex numbers and now we will move on to the next thing that is conjugate of a complex number. Conjugate of a complex number. So first we will see what is conjugate of a complex number and then we will move on to the properties of conjugate. So let Z be a complex number A plus alpha B. If you change the sign of imaginary part, the number obtained will be called the conjugate of the original number. So here the imaginary part is B plus B. You change the sign, it will become A minus alpha B. You just change the sign of imaginary part, not real part, only imaginary part. Just change the sign and the number obtained, this a minus iota b will be called the conjugate of z and will be denoted by z bar. So, what is the difference between z and z bar? They are having same real part, but their imaginary parts are negative of each other. So, Simply, if z is 2 plus 3 iota, what is z bar? It is 2 minus 3 iota. If z is 2 minus 3 iota, then z bar is 2 plus 3 iota. So what you have to do? You are just to change the sign of the imaginary part to obtain the complex conjugate of a complex number. Now, we will move on to the properties of complex numbers. There are several properties of conjugate of a complex number. So what these properties are? Let us see. The first property is conjugate of conjugate is the original complex number. And it is very much simple. You are given a number z. You will take its conjugate. What you have to do? You have to just change the sign of the imaginary part. And if you once again change the sign of the imaginary part, what you will get? The original number. So, z bar bar means you have to change the sign of the imaginary part two times. If it is originally minus, first you will change it to plus and then once again to minus you will get the original number. So, z bar bar is the number z. This is the first property. Secondly, z plus z bar is two times real part of z. Similarly, z minus z bar is two times imaginary part of z. You can verify it very easily. Suppose your z is a plus iota b. So what will be your z bar? It will be a minus iota b. And if you add these two, then z plus z bar is equal to, this will be cancelled and you will get 2 times a and what is a? This a is the real part of z. So z plus z bar is 2 times the real part of z. So similarly, uh, z minus z bar, you will get 2 iota times, sorry, 2 iota times imaginary part of z. Because if you subtract, look at here, if you subtract, it is a plus iota b, it is a minus iota b, you have to subject, just change the signs and changing signs z minus z bar, this a will be cancelled and you will get 2 iota b and b is the imaginary part, so it is 2 iota times the imaginary part of z, so this is the second property of conjugate of complex numbers. Then we move on to the next property that when a complex number is equal to its complex conjugate. So z is equal to z bar if and only if z is purely 
real. Purely real means its imaginary part is zero. That means suppose your z is two. Two means you can say two plus zero alpha. So here, what is the imaginary part? Imaginary part is zero. So it is purely real. So if the number is purely real, what will be its conjugate? What you have to do to obtain the complex conjugate of z? You have to change the sign of imaginary part. And imaginary part is zero. So changing the sign of zero, it will remain zero. So two minus zero alpha, it is two. It is also two. So z is equal to z bar. So z will be equal to its complex conjugate if and only if it is purely real. And z will be equal to minus z bar if and only if z is purely imaginary. And what is meaning of purely imaginary now? Similar. That means the real part is now zero. So if your z is zero plus three iota. What will be your z bar? It will be zero minus three iota, and you know that three iota is equal to minus of minus three iota, or you can say minus three iota is minus three iota. What is this minus three iota? This is your z bar. What is this minus of this? This three iota. This is your z. So z bar is equal to minus of z, or you can say z is equal to minus z bar, and it is true. If z is a purely imaginary number, so it is another property of complex conjugate of a number. Then there are several other property. I'm just going to write. I'm not going to explain because these are very easy. Z1 plus Z2 bar is Z1 bar plus Z2 bar. Z1 minus Z2 bar. Is equal to Z1 bar minus Z2 bar. Z1 Z2 bar is equal to Z1 bar into Z2 bar. This property can be easily verified uh, by taking Z1 to be equal to A plus iota b and Z2 to be equal to C plus iota b, C plus iota d. You can verify any of these properties. And the fourth property is Z1 upon Z2 bar is equal to Z1 bar. Upon Z2 bar, but keep it in mind that Z2 must not be zero. So Z2 must be a non-zero complex number for the fourth property. So these are some properties, and then we will move on to the more properties of complex numbers. One thing is there. Now, before going into the more properties, I must tell you what is the modulus of a complex number. If Z is a number a plus iota b. Then modulus of z is actually the modulus is the distance of z from the origin. But that portion we will cover in the coordinate geometry. I am just going to tell you that mod z is square root of sum of the squares of real and imaginary parts. So it is real part of z square plus imaginary part of z square. So you can easily see that real part of Z is a a, so it is a square plus imaginary part of Z is b, so it is b square. So if Z is equal to a plus iota b, then modulus of Z or mod Z you can say is equal to the square root of a square plus b square. It is also called the absolute value of Z. Now we will cover more properties of conjugate along with the modulus of Z. First thing that mod of z is zero if and only if the number z itself is zero. It is the first property that modulus of a complex number can be zero if and only if the number itself is zero. That means the real part is zero as well as the imaginary part of z is zero. The second thing is that mod z is always greater than or equal to zero. And we have seen that it is zero if and only if z is zero. That means for a non-zero complex number, mod z is always positive. So it is the second property. And now we move on to the third property. That is, z multiplied by its conjugate gives you mod z square. And verification is once again easy. Suppose your z is a plus iota b. Then what is your z bar? It is a minus iota b. So, what is your z into z bar? 
ए प्लस आयोटा बी इन टू ए माइनस आयोटा बी फॉर मल्टीप्लाइंग यू विल गेट ए स्क्वायर माइनस आयोटा स्क्वायर बी स्क्वायर एंड यू विल गेट आयोटा स्क्वायर इज माइनस वन सो हेयर वॉट यू विल गेट यू विल गेट प्लस बी स्क्वायर एंड दिस ए स्क्वायर प्लस बी स्क्वायर कैन बी रिटर्न एज ए स्क्वायर प्लस बी स्क्वायर स्क्वायर रूट एंड देन वंस अगेन स्क्वायर एंड दिस अंडर रूट ए स्क्वायर प्लस बी स्क्वायर इज नथिंग बट मॉट जेड सो इट इज मॉट जेड स्क्वायर so z into z bar is mod z square it is another property of conjugate along with the properties of modulus of complex numbers then there are more properties one of the properties is that mod of z is same as the mod of complex conjugate of z and is also same as mod of minus z so these three are equal there is another property that mod of z square is mod of z bar square so i'm just going to write now you can verify these properties yourself now mod of minus z is less than or equal to real part of z is less than or equal to mod of z and similarly minus mod of z is less than or equal to imaginary part of z is less than or equal to mod of z and these two are the very important properties of complex numbers now more properties are there one of the properties is what is mod of z1 plus z2 square it is mod of z1 square plus mod of z2 square plus 2 times real part of z1 into z2 bar so this is another property of complex numbers and if you replace this positive sign by negative sign here this plus sign will also be converted into the minus and it will be another property of complex numbers then there is one more property that is mod of z1 plus z2 is less than or equal to mod z1 plus mod z2 also known as triangular inequality and there is one more property mod of z1 minus z2 is greater than or equal to mod of z1 minus mod of z2 there is another very very important property which i am going to take now a z1 minus b z2 this number mod sorry mod square and then plus mod of b z1 minus a z2 square so what it is equal to it is equal to a square plus b square into mod of z1 square plus mod of z2 square it is another very important property and if you take in this property a to be equal to 1 and b also equal to 1 what you are going to get here you will get z1 minus z2 square plus here you will get z1 here here it is plus sorry so z1 minus z2 square is equal to what you will get here 1 square plus 1 square that means 2 so it is 2 times mod of z1 square plus mod of z2 square so it is another property of complex numbers so i am going to stop this video here in the next video we will discuss more about complex numbers its properties and definitely we will solve many many questions regarding to complex numbers which are important from point of view of examinations of cbse board icsc board state boards and then we will solve several questions which are important from point of view of competitive examinations like iit mnr and so on so thank you for liking my video for sharing these videos with plus one students and subscribing my channel thank you thank you once again